ESN TV coverage of the 12th Annual Consortium for School Networking Conference is sponsored by Smart Technologies, N Computing, and CCC Video On Demand in cooperation with Cable in the Classroom and Consortium for School Networking. One of the key themes to emerge at COSIN's annual conference in San Francisco is the need for schools to re-engage today's generation of learners. And a big advocate of that idea is Lord David Putnam of Great Britain, who sat down with these school news to discuss how today's schools should change for the 21st century. As a filmmaker, Lord David Putnam has made several highly acclaimed films, including The Mission, The Killing Fields, and Chariots of Fire. He's the only non-American to lead a major Hollywood studio, having run Columbia Pictures in the 1980s. I asked Lord Putnam what he believes education could learn from the entertainment industry. I think probably the most important thing is who its audience is. I mean, you know, I was sometimes accused of, of making slightly high-minded films, but I always knew that eventually I'd have to find an audience with them. And so you actually tailor your, your offering uh, to an extent to that audience. One of the reasons I retired from the film industry when I was 55 is because it became increasingly obvious that the film audience was remorselessly uh, sort of 16 to 24, and I was remorselessly getting older, and the gap between us was, was not going to diminish. So um, I think the ability, to, uh, the, the ability to understand what the audience is and to tailor the product in, this, in our case, in the case of education, the product being learning, uh, to the audience. Um, that, to an extent, has been true of education down the ages. But um, one of the things, that, one of the reasons I was here at the conference is to try and make the point that we've got to, got to go, also got to go to where the audience is and what platforms the audience are adjusted to. And I see that as representing much more of an opportunity than a threat. I equally happen to believe that unless we make that shift, uh, then the nature of the threat could come along and overwhelm us because if we allow a, a growing disparity between the way in which young people uh, receive information, deal with information in their, in their own time, in, during their own lives, uh, and the way in which they're expected to do exactly the same thing effectively at school, if that disparity is allowed to grow, it'll turn into a chasm and sooner or later kids will say, I don't understand this, this has got nothing to do with me, it has nothing to do with the way in which I live my life, it's got nothing to do with the way in which I receive information, and worse, it's got nothing to do with the way in which I will continue to live my life once I leave school. So there'll be this, I'm terrified of this discontinuity between the nature of education and the nature of real life. Lord Putnam spoke at a pre-conference symposium on using games and simulations to better engage students. His message? We may be sucking our teeth in the education sector and wishing to kind of pick and choose what we do or don't want to engage with. But the truth is that the Microsofts and the Murdochs and the, and the Googles and the Yahoos of the world, they're moving ahead and they, in a sense, have captured our, our children. They have our children. Uh, so in a, in a sense, we have to either make common cause with them, or we have to step up the plate and insist that at least the ethos of learning, the ethos of learning that, that, that educators are adjusted to and educators are comfortable with, becomes the dominant ethos. Otherwise, we're going to respectfully surrender even the ethos of learning to commercial enterprises. I don't want to see that happen. In 1997, Lord Putnam was invited by the UK to join its education department. In his service to that nation's government, he started a national teaching award system to improve teacher morale and recognize best practices. He's also leading a push to train Britain's teachers in the use of interactive whiteboards. I'm a huge fan of interactive whiteboards. I think interactive whiteboards are an amazing uh, creation. But there was a sense that interactive whiteboards were being sold, uh, literally just shifting boards, without any of the requisite or sufficient re uh, requisite um, uh, training to go with the teachers. So what we, ha we had was this brilliant platform, potentially brilliant learning platform, but inadequately trained teachers. And again, so I tried to flag that up. We've been working on ways in which we can uh, address that issue. Lord Putnam will head up the UK's Open University later this year. As Great Britain's largest university, it reaches students who can't attend school full-time. It was a, a brilliant creation in the late 1960s. So the first graduating students left in 73. Um, it was the first genuinely open university, that's to say it was a university for people who could work part-time, uh, correspondence courses principally uh, in the early days, and had a staggering effect on, on Britain. We've now graduated over two million people. Uh, we have 220,000 students uh, a year going through the university. But, like everything else, it's an endangered being an institution that either rests on its laurels or gets bypassed by technology. 
and so the, the job at the Open University is to, in a sense, reinvent what is the Open University of the 21st century. I'll have the privilege of being Chancellor of the Open University of the 20th century, which was in itself an immense breakthrough. But how much of that is relevant and how much of that can progress through to, the, to delivering learning in the 21st century? Originally, it was a television delivered and, and a correspondence course delivered. It was a mix and match between television and correspondence course. The television component of it, live, the off-air live component, is almost gone now, uh, all but gone. Uh, so much of that is transferred to online. But I have a feeling, and I can't articulate it yet, that there is another whole stride we can take, another whole step that we could, we could, we could take uh, to make it that much more pertinent to the, uh, the world that we're moving into.